Hello Violets. In this video, we're going to go over some of the changes that have happened to the Psyker in the last patch, specifically changes to our Peril uh, Quelling. It reads as follows. Normalized passive vent times for non-warp weapons, they defaulted to max speed previously. Enable passive quell time modifier as part of the quell speed bonus stat for 4 staffs, and slightly buffed passive quell times for staffs across the board. So first off, we're going to take a look at what this quell time modifier looks like. And so if you go into your staffs and inspect the quell speed, you will see we now have a new peril decay modifier, which basically translates as how fast you passively lose peril when you have your staff out. And this is definitely an improvement. You can definitely see that you will quell peril much faster if you're just walking around with your staff now. A wonderful uh, improvement to the quality of life for psychers here. However, Everything else about the change is a downgrade. And if you've been browsing Reddit or the Psyker Discord, you will know that everyone is not happy about this change because previously, what Psykers would do was use your staff a lot, uh, use it to fight in general, which is the actual main point of playing a Psyker is to use your staffs, drain a whole bunch of peril, then swap to a non-force weapon and begin rapidly quelling peril. You would probably drop to about 30% peril in under six seconds or so. But now, to get to 30% peril, which I consider a reasonable amount of peril to be at to restart your combat loop, takes about 15 seconds as well. So that is definitely a nerf to our combat flexibility as a Psyker and the kind of weapons that we can pick because we can't manually quell with a non-force weapon. So that is generally where a lot of frustration is coming from because this was how we played Psykers for the last three months. But if you look at the wording of the change, you can see that this, in Fatchuk's eyes, was a bug fix. And they knew that changing this alone would definitely leave a sour taste in everyone's mouth, well, Psykers only. And so they decided to introduce the addition of the quell speed modifier so that while we are using our staffs, it would feel a lot more smoother to be in combat with a staff rather than keep switching to a non-force weapon to quell. I suppose from a law point of view, this makes sense because why why would a non-force weapon be able to quell my peril much faster than something designed to channel or focus that energy into it? But, you know, what is law friendly doesn't necessarily mean it's gameplay friendly. Uh, anyway, the key thing I wanted to find out and is the point of this video is to see how this translates beyond our weapon choices. And for that, we need to go into our feats. So starting from the first column of our uh, feats here, the direct nerf for non-force weapons is definitely quietude because previously you could quell rapidly and so you could also rapidly regenerate toughness that is now no longer as effective on a non-force melee weapon anymore. Uh, for the second column, and nothing has changed so far, it just makes Inner Tranquility more valuable for staffs to keep your combat uptime high. So. No changes here really. For third column, there also hasn't been any changes. For fourth column is where a major change happens. And unfortunately, the change to non-force weapons quelling speed is an indirect nerf to kinetic deflection again. Uh, the reason being is kinetic deflection it was largely used as a emergency stamina bar to help you clutch situations where you have to revive a fallen teammate in the middle of a horde. Now, because of this change, if you were not using a force sword and instead using, say, a combat axe, if you are reviving your teammate and a, and the pox workers are attacking you, you will successfully, you will likely revive your teammate in time, but you will end up in a position where you now have a lot of peril on you and you have, don't have a, the breathing room to quell with your staff. While not, well, for some, depending on your skill level, not the biggest deal, it is definitely a drop in the quality of life for psycho combat. A positive change from this might have been Kinetic Shield, which I thought was going to be helpful because the idea was you could generate a whole bunch of peril, switch to your melee weapon, which now degrades peril slower and therefore take advantage of Kinetic Shield's damage reduction from range attacks for longer. The problem is this values of 10 and 33% don't really make a difference on the higher difficulties, especially as a Psyker when you already have very low base toughness. This might save you from getting your toughness broken in one shot from a shooter, and, and that's about it. It doesn't do anything to help you more than that. So it's a buff to Kinetic Shield indirectly, but 
not really a change to how we would build our cycles. Uh, as for the rest of the other two columns, nothing much has changed, I believe. They are still the same. A change that I thought would have been useful, and if it followed through with this patch, was to Warp Unleash, actually. Oh, by the way, Warp Unleash is a new name given to this uh, particular feat. It used to also be called uh, Psychinetics Wrath, which I pointed out in my, in my guide video as well. So the idea with, with this was you would generate a whole bunch of peril and be empowered by the warp. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in Warhammer 40k lore, psychers can be empowered with the warp to have inhuman strength. And so you could use that to translate to a battle mage kind of a build. You would generate a whole bunch of peril, swap to your melee weapon, take advantage of the slow quell time, and actually use it to, to be much more stronger in melee combat. So that was a, that would at least be an option. But the problem with this is it only works on force weapon attacks. And if we're talking about melee, the only weapon that can benefit from this is your force sword. And your force sword as a melee weapon isn't that great. Sure, everything else about it is good. The push attack is excellent. Deflector is wonderful. And by the way, also got a buff because they fixed um, inner tranquility working with kinetic deflection that makes deflector even more useful now uh, in terms of being able to tank things. Uh, but back to warp unleashed. The problem is, yeah, the problem is the only weapon it works on is not very good as a melee weapon in of itself. So if they change this to maybe 10% to 25% damage that decays with your peril, but for all melee weapons, this would have been a viable pick and would work well because you want to generate a lot of peril quickly, which means you do not want to have inner tranquility in this case. So this is, just making this work on all melee weapons would make this, perk, uh, make this feat a viable feat already. Another change that happened in this patch was the update to Wreck and Ruin. Now, instead of killing, although the tooltip still says killing, it is now on hit. So as long as you hit an elite or special with Brain Burst, you will set them and everything around within the 3 meter range on Soul Blaze. But as I went over in my last uh, Ascendant Blaze video, two stacks of Soul Blaze isn't useful because it doesn't do anything. Sure, it can help you generate warp charges if you kill something with it with Ascendant Blaze here, but the actual practical application is not that useful and you have to pick this over in a tranquility, which, as far as I'm concerned, is not worth it at all. The only time where you might consider um, having Wreck and Ruin uh, useful is if you pair it with Kinetic Barrage and you are brain burst, chain brain bursting a uh, monster. Then you might be able to stack enough Soul Blaze, char uh, Soul Blaze stacks to, for it to make a difference. But again, the problem is. If you are using Kinetic Barrage and you have some warp charges from before the monster fight, then you don't take advantage of Inner Tranquility and have very, very cheap Brain Burst. Which, again, I don't think is worth the damage you get from Wreck and Ruin. By the way, this is just a small tip now. I'm not sure if this is a bug, but this, at least for the time being, help you get the Malleus Monstronum Penance a lot easier, is Cerebral Lacerations. For some reason, even though it says all non-warp sources, it works with Brain Burst. And if you want to have a build specifically to go after this pendants, uh, on your fifth column, use Kinetic Flare because Brain Burst can activate Kinetic Flare as well as long as you meet the conditions here. So, just to demonstrate, to reach the break point for Brain Burst to two-shot a Bulwark, you need to have four Warp Chargers. Now, I have none. And if I activate Kinetic Barrage just to speed things up, just... Um, 1,210, and the next one would be 1,490, which is a ability to two-shot a bulwark with just kinetic laceration, uh, cerebral lacerations. So what this translates to, if you're trying to get the pendants, is that for every brain, for every four brain bursts you cast, you can basically get a free one with this from the damage you gain, and this helps a lot uh, to get the the pendants done. Don't pair this with wreck and ruin, even though it might sound like a good idea, because you need to get the killing blow with Brain Burst. And if the tick damage from Soul Blaze kills it, you've just wasted the entire round trying to get the pendants. So yeah, that's all I have for this video. I'll be releasing uh, more things as I get back on schedule. I've been quite busy with work. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Violets.